Hey guys, um, so in this last video for PA4, I'm going to be talking about how we're going to do my sketch thread. So my sketch thread. And as you know, what we want for scheduling in this assignment is for you to do a FIFO um, uh, scheduling algorithm, and so we're going to be using a queue. So um, when you call init, init thread, so at the beginning of time, there's two ways to do this. Uh, one is where the currently running thread is part of your queue, and one is where it's not. I like to do it where it is part of the queue. If you like to do it where it's not, that's fine. Just my whole example will work. Just shift everything kind of one forward. Um, but I'll do it where the currently running thread is part of the queue. So when we initialize, our currently running thread is zero, right, the main thread. And so we're going to go ahead and add that to our queue, thread zero. And like I said, I like to make it where the front is the currently running thread. Uh, currently running thread. Okay. So that's at the beginning in init. So now let's assume zero calls spawn. Then we'll have zero. And if zero is going to spawn thread one because that's the next thread. So we got, we're going to create a node with one and add it to our queue. Great. If zero calls spawn again, we have zero, then we have one, and we're going to create a node two and add it to the back of our queue. Let's do it one more time. Zero calls spawn. It's now on all of these zero because zero is the running thread right now. So then we just have our queue. We create a new node three. We add it to the back. All right. Cool. Now let's assume zero calls sketch. What should that do? My schedule thread. That should put the cur the current thread zero at the back. It should shift everything forward. And it should schedule the thread that's now at the front. So that's one. Okay? So that's who we scheduled next. Cool. So now, now we're thread one. So it's going to be one calling the methods. And let's assume one calls spawn. Well, same as before, we're going to have our queue. Just as it is. And then at the back, we're going to create a new node for the new thread, which is 4. And we're going to add it to the back of our queue. Okay. Now, let me just get rid of this. Okay. Let's assume 1 call sketch. That's going to put the thread that called 1 at the back. It's going to shift everything forward. And it's going to schedule the thread that's now at the front, which is 2. Okay? Great. So now we're, we're, we're thread 2. What happens if 2 calls sketch? Again, calling thread goes at the back, or currently running thread goes at the back. Everything shifts forward. And we schedule the thread that's now at the front, which is 3. Okay. So now, let's assume 3 calls yield on thread 1. Okay, so 3 wants to yield to 1. What will that do? That'll take the currently running thread, the calling thread, 3, put it at the back. It'll take the thread that we want to yield to, 1, remove it from our queue and put it at the front one and everything else stays the same so the zero stays the same the four stays the same the one's not there anymore because we moved it so then comes two and then three at the back 
because that was the currently running thread. And the thread that's running is 1, right? Which is good, because that's the one that we yield it to. Okay, so now let's do that one more time. Let's have 1, which is the currently running thread, call yield to 4. What that'll do is it'll take the, the calling thread 1, put it at the back, remove 4 from our list, the thread we want to yield to, put it at the front, everything else stays the same. Now 4 is not there, so the next one is 2, then 3, 1 at the back, and then the one that we that we long jump to, the one that's going to run, is thread 4, which is the one we yielded to. Okay, one last time. Let's have 4 call yield to 1, so that you guys see what that does. We take the calling thread, we put it at the back, 4 goes at the back. We find the thread we want to yield to, which is 1, we put it at the front, 1 goes at the front. Everything else stays the same. 0, 2, 3, okay? And the one thread that's running, or currently running thread, is 1, the one we yielded to. Cool. Okay, now let's assume that one exits. One is done, it dies. It calls exit thread. When one exits, we want to call sketch. This will remove it from our queue completely. Everything else shifts forward. So zero, then two, then three, then four. We don't re-add one, right? Because it's dead. We don't want to re-add it. And the thread that we schedule is zero. That's the next thread that's going to run. Okay? Let's do that one more time. Let's have zero call exit. Again, exit should call sketch. And what this should do is remove zero from the queue completely. Everything else shifts forward, so we have 2, 3, and 4. We don't re-add 0 to the back because it is a dead thread. And the one we want to schedule to run is 2. Awesome. Okay, something to note here. When the last thread, which may or may not be 0, it, it could be any thread, but when the last thread calls my exit thread so you should keep track of some size right to know or some num threads variable so that you know how many threads are running when the last one calls um, my exit thread this means that your queue will be empty once you remove that last thread right will be empty then you have to call exit and that's what that call looks like just exit to finish the program. And that's how you, you finish this program, basically. So that's just something you guys should, should keep in mind when implementing scheduling and, uh, and, and exiting. OK. So how do you actually go about implementing this? How to implement this? Well, as you guys probably guessed, the easiest thing to do is to write a queue for all your threads. Write a queue, right? Just as we've done before, a static uh, array that you call queue, and you're going to kind of use as a queue that holds your threads. Um, or, you know, if you ha if you coded this for a previous assignment, you can reuse an old one. I recommend highly that you implement these methods. Implement an add front that takes in an int ID and will create a new node, set its ID to whatever you pass in, and put it at the front of your queue. Similarly, implement an add back that takes in an int ID, creates a new node, puts it at the back. Implement a remove. that takes in an int ID. And this remove finds the node with, with that ID and removes it from anywhere in the list. 
It could be from the middle, from the beginning, from the end, from anywhere. Right? And you have kind of those three special cases you have to deal with. Um, and if you have those three methods, then it should be pretty straightforward to implement my schedule and, and my yield and my exit thread, kind of just using those three methods and figuring out who needs to do what. Um, there's kind of two ways of implementing your queue. So, kind of on the back end, implementing the queue data structure. One way that you guys have probably all been doing is a circular array. And that's basically just an array. And then you have like your front and your back. And then things loop around the array. And then maybe your front grows that way and your back grows that way. Um, that's one way to do it, and that's fine. If you can implement these three methods with a circular array, if you feel comfortable doing those three methods with a circular array, go for it. And you can reuse a lot of code that way. Um, another slightly easier way of doing it, if you don't already have a queue implemented or you're not quite sure how to get started, is to do a doubly linked list. And now this is not a doubly linked list how you guys are probably used to. Like, you're not newing anything. You're not newing any nodes because you can't really use malloc here. Um, but it's a doubly linked list because your elements, and I'll draw this in a sec, have next and previous indices. So they keep track of the index where the next and the previous elements are. Um, and you, you still do this with an array, right? You, you don't malloc new nodes or anything like that. It's just, it looks something like this. You have your array, and then the array has indices. Okay, and then any one element of your array is going to have a bunch of stuff. It'll have an ID, which is like an int, right? It'll have a valid, also an int. And this ID is like the, the thread ID, right? It'll have an int next, and that's the index of the next element, right? So like, if the next element of 3 is index 5, then like that'll kind of point to that. And then also an int previous, which is an index to the previous element. And that doesn't have to be the element right next to it, although it could be. Like, it could be any element. And so that's kind of how you do the, the doubly linked list scenario. And that's basically all you need your elements to have. So it's just an array of structs, just like you've seen before. Um, and then basically, um, think about how every method, like my exit, thread and my init thread methods and my yield thread and my spawn thread. Think about how your different methods interact with the queue and its elements. So that you know what you need to do with everywhere basically. And its elements. Okay. Um basically things like my init thread, my spawn thread, my scheduling thread, my yield thread, and my exit thread. I think those are the ones you need to worry about for this part. So think about what each of these needs to do in terms of the queue. And you're, you're adding code here, right, to your already existing code. Um, a hint that I can give you guys that will make, make it a little bit easier. Um, if you have, like if we go up to this example, oh, and, and again, you want to do those methods in terms of these three things, right? Add front, add back, and remove. Um, if you notice when we call sketch, like here, the first time we call sketch, our queue moved from here to here after the sketch right? 
it, it, it was basically the same as if one had called yield two, right? Like we took one, we put it at the back, and then we took the we found two, and then we put it at the front, and everything else stayed the same. So that's kind of a hint of how you can implement scheduling in a really really easy manner. Um, if you have yield to kind of all the heavy like lifting for you. Um, okay, um, so that is basically it for this part. I'll upload these notes so you guys can have a look at them. Um, but the scheduling is not easy. Take the time to write the methods for your queue, and then it'll make this part of the assignment much, much, much easier.